Welcome to Thursday, listeners. We're just about at Easter. So in Australia, we have the Easter long weekend starting Friday to Monday. And we won't be having a daily podcast on those days because it's a public holiday here. So we're going to take a break over those days. This morning, we have the wonderful Sandy from So Over 50. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you very much, Maria. So this morning, listeners, we're going to run through a couple of hints and tips when it comes to using hashtags. Some people know how to use them, others don't. And I have to confess that I don't know how to use them too well. So Sandy, can you give us a bit of a background as to how hashtags help you when you post? Right. Well, when I first really started getting into Instagram about, oh, it was, it was around about over 50 or a little bit before, I started just using hashtags willy-nilly and um, picking up a few. And as I went along and then picked up the um, co-editor role with Judith, mm -hmm. I realised the importance of the hashtags. You need to look at them as something like helping your post explore itself within the domain of Instagram. Look at it as, as a body and think of the words connective tissue because that's what will connect you to all the other posts on Instagram. The other thing is I look at it as a sorting bin. It sorts posts into sorting bins okay. so that um, you've got people connecting, but it also puts your post out into the sorting bins of what you've particularly um, used for your hashtags. Just before we go into all the detail, I have to say that hashtags are only applicable for public accounts. If you have a private account, only your followers can see you. So they might see you under a hashtag, but only your followers can see you there. So it's important to understand that if you're going to enter a challenge, that you do have to have a public account because challenges ask for a hashtag. And that's where they will make up their hashtag for a challenge and will go into that sorting bin so that they can find the people who've used and entered that competition. So for example, if you had been getting involved with putting your image up on the weekend for virtual cocktails. Yes. Then if you had a public account, your image would be seen by everybody. That's right. But if you had a private account, yes, you would be in that group. Yes. But only people that you'd give you permission to see your post would see you in that group. That's right. And that's oh. what I say. If you've got a private account, really, there's little use using hashtags. Okay. Because only your followers see you. That's right. It's mm. really good to know. My next question is, when there are so many different challenges, where do you keep the hashtags? Because I can never keep them in my head. Where would you keep them? Okay, for us, we make up our own hashtag, hashtag so over 50, and that's the sorting bin for our account. No one else uses that hashtag except the followers of so over 50. And then we can go through and see what's happening. And that's how we get to know our followers so well. If you don't spell it correctly or you put sewing over 50, then you don't go into that sorting bin and we don't see you. So that's the importance of getting the hashtag correct. You must always check your hashtags. So following on from that question, which hashtags? Yeah. Um, I'd do your research. Always do your research and I would put them in your notes and in that way you might be doing, have a particular bent for upcycling. So you would research those hashtags and you mm. might put upcycling, recycled fashion, all on that sort of thing. And you would keep those plus it's over 50 in your notes mm. and then you just copy and paste and put them underneath. And then if you've done a particular pattern, you do that as well, but research the pattern and see what they've got. Like uh, just thinking back to Vogue, 9253 is it vogue 9253 that has most posts or is it v 9253 so it's this refining all the time the hashtags that are going to suit your post in a way if i was looking at making you know a new pattern mm. but i wanted to do my research like you said i can go to the hashtags put that number in Yes. maybe the pattern and have a look to see what other people have done right in the reverse as you've said in the yeah. reverse what happens is people then use hashtags as a research item and you mm. might get people who like your dress you, you do, they don't follow you they come out of the blue but they've liked what you've done because you've put your hashtag into that sorting bin of that pattern yes yeah. that's right but definitely keep them in notes. We advise that all the time, copy and paste, and then 
just add the ones that are pertinent to the post. I think that's the best advice we can give and just make sure that for our particular site, it's hashtag S-E-W-O-V-E-R 50. Mm -hmm. That is the only one that has all the words spelt out. All the rest are hashtag S-O-5-0, like coats, S-O-5-0, pants, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. that's it. Mm. Well, good advice. Thanks, Andy. Can I only put a couple of hashtags on my post? You can use up to 30. I wouldn't advise that. It just becomes too heavy and looks too needy. <laughs> mm. I think going back to the relevant tags for yourself and then copy pasting and then changing those ones. You've got to be careful of the tags you use. You might want to put hashtag I sew, but if you go to that, there's 795 thousand another one I looked up got 11 million you're not going to be seen and one of the things that you're doing is that you're sharing your sewing so I would be looking at when you're researching your tags as to which ones to use we use our sober 50 we use hashtag socialist we use hashtag sewing community because that's what we're about we're a sewing community so that's why we put that out there I think another cute one that I've seen used is hashtag sewing friends, the sewing best friends the best friends yes yes, yes. And, and that's then a lovely one there's a few variations sewing friends are the best then you've got sewing friends are the best friends so you can actually see how many people have used mm. it before you actually use it yes and when you look at the hashtag at the top you will see other suggestions across the top as well yeah so you can bounce off those and the other thing about hashtags is you can follow a hashtag so that if you are interested in V9253, follow the hashtag and a sample will come up in your feed, not all. So every now and again, they mm. will throw them through your feed for you to have a look at. So you can follow a hashtag as well. Yeah, I've noticed that and it's quite interesting when Instagram gives you a few, you know, that you mm. follow this and this is what it is and then you can make your choice. Do you want yes. to use that in future or not? Or do you want to follow it as well? That's right. Yeah, yeah, you can follow it. And by the same token, if you've made it, you can unfollow. To the casual Instagram user, hashtags can either be used to spread your sewing adventures across the sewing community, or you can ignore them. The choice is yours, and we've heard from Sandy as to how you can make hashtags work for you. Thanks, Sandy, for giving us the start of this two-part series around hashtags. There are two more topics that Sandy covers about hashtags, which I know you'll find really useful. Come back next week on Thursday to hear the second part of Sandy's chat about hashtags. We won't be having a daily podcast Friday and Monday this week because it's a long weekend. Listeners, relax, stay home, stay safe, and if you can, find some time to sew. We'll see you next week on Tuesday morning. Cheers, listeners. Bye.